So dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Savior Jesus Christ, Christ passed from death to life, the church invites her children throughout the world to gather in vigil and in prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord, and we honor the memory of Christ's death and resurrection by hearing his word and celebrating his mysteries, confident that we share his victory over death and live with him forever in God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Eternal God, in Jesus Christ, you have given the light of the light of life to all the world. Bless this new fire and increase in us a desire to shine forth with the brightness of Christ's rising until we feast at the banquet of eternal light through the Son of Righteousness, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the ending to Christ belongs all time and in all ages. To Christ belongs glory and dominion. And now, forever. Amen. And may the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. Rejoice now, all heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ is risen, Jesus Christ is risen. Celebrate with exaltation and sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Jesus Christ is risen, Jesus Christ is risen. Christ has conquered, glory fills you, darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O holy church, Exalt in glory, 
the risen Savior shines upon you. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. Let this place resound with you. Echoing the mighty song of all God's people, the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that with heart and mind and voice we should praise God and the Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed us from bondage to freedom. For this is the night, this is the night, this is the night, this is the night. This is the night you led the children of Israel out of slavery to freedom. On this night all believers are renewed in grace and restored again to holiness. Oh, this is the night, this is the night, this is the night, this is the night. This is the night when Christ burst the chains of death, rising to life in triumph. Oh, this is the night, this is the night, this is the night, this is the night. Night clear as day, putting wickedness to flight. Wash, washing sin away, restoring innocence to the fallen, joy to those who mourn, casting out hate, bringing peace and humbling pride. Therefore in this night of grace, receive, O God, our praise and thanksgiving, for the light of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, reflected in the burning of this candle. Oh, this is the night, this is the night. We sing the glories of this pillar of fire, the brightness of which is not diminished. Even with its light, it's divided and borrowed, for it is fed with the melting wax that the bees, your servants, have made for the substance of this candle. Oh, this is the night, this is the night, we therefore pray to you, O God, that this candle burning to the honor of your name will continue to vanish in the darkness of night and be mingled with the lights of heaven. May Christ the morning star find it burning, that morning star who never sets, that morning star rising from the grave faithfully sheds light on the whole human race. Oh, this is the night, this is the night, this is the night, this is the night. And we pray, O oh God, rule, govern, and preserve with your continual protection, your whole church, giving us peace in this time of your paschal rejoicing.
sing through the same Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, and may shine as a light in the world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us listen to the word of God, recalling how he saved his people through history and in the fullness of time, sent his own son to be our redeemer. Through this Easter celebration, may God bring to fullness the saving work he has begun in us. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 1 through chapter 2, verse 4a. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the day light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered to together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light of the, to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to be, give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the birds multiply on earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, 
Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over all of the cattle, and over all of the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, and you shall have them for food, and every beast of the earth, and to every bird in the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, for the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature, and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of him who came to share in our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Now let us sing the first verse of the song, I Danced um, in the Morning. I Danced in the Morning. on the earth, and every bird of every kind, every bird, 
every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, of which there was a breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth, and the waters increased and bore upon the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the faces of the water. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and set out the raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he set out the dove for him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him in the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he set out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him that evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So no one knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and set out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. In the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and saw the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of covenant between me and the earth. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. The light, the light and darkness, and darkness look, look in mercy upon, upon your church, that, that wonderful, wonderful and, and sacred mystery that, that it may be an ark of peace in a, in a world of chaos, chaos and sin. Let, Let the whole world see what that was fallen what's fallen is being raised up, and that what was old is being made new, and, and that all things are being restored through him from whom they first took being, your, your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Now sing the second verse. Exodus chapters 14 and 15. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. 
They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you will have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all of his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. Now the angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord and the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us free from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had fallen them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked out on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw that the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. Your glorious deeds of old shine Shut forth even to, to our, our own day, day, as by the power of your arm you once saved your chosen people from slavery to Pharaoh. Grant by the waters of baptism that all the peoples of the earth may be saved from slavery to sin, death and hell, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
reading from Isaiah chapter 55. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast love, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that you do not know, you shall run, in to, you, you shall run to you. Because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Here is the reading. Let us pray. Holy, Holy God, God, you, you created, created all things by the power of your word, and you renew the whole earth by your spirit. Give now the water of life to all who thirst for you, that rejoicing in your covenant of mercy, we may bring forth abundant fruit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Chapter 3. King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden statue whose height was 60 cubits and whose width was 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province, province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent for the satraps, the perfect prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all of the officials of the province to assemble and come to the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces assembled for the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. When they were standing before the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the drum, and the entire musical ensemble, 
You are to fall down and worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, trigon, the harp, the drum, an entire musical ensemble, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Accordingly, at this time, cer certain Chaldeans came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the drum, the entire music ensemble shall fall down and worship the golden statue. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These pay no heed to you, O king. They do not serve your gods, and they do not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then King, king Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the drum, and the entire music ensemble to fall down and worship the statue, that I have made well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So the men were bound, still wearing their tunics, their trousers, their hats, and their, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the men who lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound, into the furnace of blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, But I see, I see four men unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. The satraps, the prefects, the governors, 
And the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed. Their tunics were not harmed. And not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that utters blasphemy against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb, and their houses laid in ruins, for there is no other God who is able to deliver in this way. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the only hope of the world, by the proclamation of your prophets, you declare to us the word of salvation. By the grace of your spirit, increase the devotion of all the baptized, That's that strengthened by your presence, we may withstand hardship and sorrow and be united with your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now let us sing our final verse of our hymn. reading from Romans chapter 6. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self has cruci was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin, but if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin, and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Here ends the reading.
12. Dim number 12. Just they're so we have some light in there. They're all dimmed. Oh, they're dimmed. That's right. So I'll turn them up just a little bit so she can see the candles. Okay. Get the dimmer. Oh, no. That's because I have the dimmer dimmed. right there. We are alive in Christ. Hallelujah. We live by baptism into the risen Christ. Hallelujah.
Gospel this, this evening is from John chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went to the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first went in and saw, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned return to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet descended or ascended to my Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! And grace and peace to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this evening. And I have to use my hyssop and throw out, throw out a little baptismal water tonight because this, my dear brothers and sisters, is what it's all about, is the resurrection. The life that we live through our baptism as well. This evening of vigil, we hear the good news that Jesus Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. And tonight is a night of renewed hope. Renewed hope for us all. And Easter is all about the hope that comes from the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Easter is about hope. For that is what our God is in the business of providing for each and every one of us throughout life. The, the message of the Bible from, from Genesis to Revelation is all about the hope that God brings to our lives through salvation, and more specifically, salvation through Christ Jesus. Now in John 20, verse 18, the Bible records for us the words of Mary Magdalene to the, east, to the disciples that first Easter morning when she says, I have seen the Lord. And through these words of John, it is ultimately made known to us all. The first 
resurrection day. There were so many emotions that morning, I'm, I'm guessing, when Jesus appeared outside of the tomb. For sadness turned to joy. Questions turned to answers. Death turned to life. Now remember that the Old Testament is filled with words of hope as well, right? There are psalms of hope. Hope in, our, in the Old Testament is directly tied to our God and even more so to the deliverance that God provides for us. And in the New Testament, we find more of the same. But the New Testament, in the New Testament, this hope of deliverance, sustainment, this hope of help and protection, this hope of love and joy, has a name. And his name is Jesus. For this Jesus has brought us hope through his many teachings in and throughout the scriptures. This Jesus died for our sins. This Jesus overcame death victoriously. The resurrection of Jesus changed everything for us by defeating sin and death for all time. Freeing all humanity of our burdens. And this is where our hope comes from. Even though our lives are full of sorrow and pain at times, sickness, physical distancing, quarantine, and yes, grief, Jesus' resurrection brings us hope in the midst of chaos. His victory over the cross and his ascension and, pla and place in heaven is our great hope as well. Now we're indeed living in some difficult times right now and life has been kind of turned upside down for us. So many things are up in the air, put on hold, canceled, all because of the COVID-19 breakout. And we need the kind of hope that comes from God through Jesus Christ, do we not? I believe absolutely the best thing that I can do for each of us tonight is to point you towards the words of hope. For hope is our strength. Hope is healthy. Hope is a motivator. Hope gives us direction. Hope is necessary. I would like to share with you or remind you of one of the verses that I read earlier from Romans this evening so that you can maybe hold on to this text. I'd like to, for you to think about this verse throughout this next week. There might be a, te a test on it sometime. But for this is where the hope comes from. And Paul writes these words in Romans chapter 6, verse 5. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. This is our hope, brothers and sisters. Let us celebrate our living hope as we celebrate this resurrection day. Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. Now join with me as we sing our hymn of the day of the evening, number 391, Joyful Easter Tide.
we give thanks for the gift of baptism as we come before God to make public affirmation of baptism into Christ. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us in your servants, in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Now I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church? Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, respond with, I renounce them. I, I renounce them. them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended to the dead. dead. On, On the, the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he, he will come to judge the living and the dead. dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I, I believe, believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, Church the, the communion of saints, the forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Brothers and sisters, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in a holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God, and share the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And earth. If so, respond with, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? If so, respond as we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth. You cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. So now we have to spread some of that wonderful, joyous water to the world, for it is for all people. Let us rejoice in our renewed vows of baptism, brothers and sisters. And now let us prepare for prayer. As we pray, for God's church throughout all of the world. Our response will be, you will hear the words of the Lord in your mercy, and you will respond with, hear our prayer. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, this is the night when your holy church gathers around fire and water, bread and wine, story and celebration. Make us eager to go into all the world with the news that Christ is alive 
and death is conquered. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, in the beginning you created all things and declared them good, where floods and fires threaten to overwhelm and destroy. Speak peace against chaos. Set rainbows in the skies as signs of your faithfulness. Shine your glory through each twinkling star. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, you are deliverance for people enslaved by conflict, corruption, and inequality. Grant wisdom to governments and world leaders. Lead them in the way of righteousness and along paths of justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, hold vigil with all who watch and wait this night. Who's sitting beside dying loved ones, who's working the night shift at hospitals and care centers, emergency first responders, those awaiting test results or diagnosis, those who suffer from the coronavirus, and those who long for healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, stir up the waters of salvation and bring renewed life to all who receive or affirm the gift of baptism this night. Claim us as your beloved children. Clothe us in the garments of salvation and raise us from death to life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, bless the memory of all the faithful witnesses who boldly proclaim, We have seen the Lord. Give us confidence that because Christ has been raised, we too will be raised to a new life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, according to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always and, and also with, with you. you. Let us please share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace of the Lord be with you all. God's peace be with you, my dear friends. And now as we uh, have some quiet time, this is our offering space, and uh, I know folks have been so generous in sending in your pledges, your offerings to us here at church, uh, here at Bethany, and we certainly appreciate that. It continues to allow us to keep our ministries alive and serving in our community. So please do so that with that. But as we do so now, let us hear some special music by our dear sweet Francis. <laughs>
And thank you for that. Now let's sing our canticle of praise together. Since we aren't have, able to have our Easter egg hunt this year, as we normally do, if you could share with me uh, some of those Easter egg hunt pictures out there if you're having them within your immediate families. I so would appreciate it, and we would love to uh, include them into our next weekly uh, newsletter article, so please do that. So prepare for the ben benediction. Christ has gone to prepare a place for us. May his resurrection bring you all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Now our closing hymn, ELW 369, Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia.